Hello, this is John Kavanagh from DMB Software, and this is a quick introduction to FastRest Micro. The aim of this tutorial is to make you familiar with the ideas and techniques involved in performing a risk analysis with FastRest Micro, and to give you practice in defining a range of common types of hazardous events. The first task is opening the FastRest Example Study folder. The program is supplied with an example study folder called Tutorials, which is used in this chapter to give a quick introduction to the terminology and approaches used. To open the study folder, choose Open Example from the File menu, the Tutorials folder, and the Fastest Example Study. The appearance of the main window changes with a when a study folder is open. There are many more toolbars, and there is a pane with seven tabs sections to the left hand side of the window. The pane is known as the study tree pane and you work in its various tab sections to set up the input data for the analysis. The study tree pane allows you to organize and edit the input data for your risk analysis. The pane contains a number of tab sections, each which covers a different type of data and these tab sections are now described. The run rows tab is a combination of input data from across the other tab sections. Each analysis always contains two run rows to allow you to calculate the risk of two alternative scenarios and then to combine or to compare the risks. The concept of run rows should become clearer if you have seen the setup of the input data in the other tab sections. The models tab is used in two different ways in FastSource Micro, though these have different meanings but are unlikely to cause confusion. A model is known as a set of available calculations. The program has several different sets of calculations available and each of these is known as a separate model and has its own model icon. You cannot place a model icon under the study tree itself but only under a study or folder. To add a model to a particular point in the structure, select the study or folder and then select insert and then the model that you want to insert. Five models in the first section of the menu are those that can be used in the risk calculations and the six models in the second set are those that can be used for consequence calculations. The weathers tab section contains two folders, one containing two weathers that are representative of the day conditions and one containing two which are representative of the night conditions. The name of each weather gives the atmospheric stability category and the wind speed. In the illustration, the night weather folder appears with black text while the day weather folder is greyed out. This shows that the night weather folder and its two weathers are selected for the night run row, which is the row selected as the current run row. When you perform the calculation for this run row, the program will run the dispersion, effect and risk calculations twice for each model with a separate run set of calculations for each of the two weather conditions. In FastRisk Micro, the current run row is the run row that is selected for the drop down list in the study tree pane. The night run row is selected as the current run row and the night weather weather folder is shown with black text. If you change the current run row to the day run row, you will see that the black text moves to the day weather folder. In the parameters tab section, parameters are background inputs that are applied to all calculations and are not specific to a particular model. Parameters are organized in parameter set folders. Each study folder is created with a default set, but you can create additional sets if you want to process some run rows with different values for the parameters. In the fastness example study, there is a single set called example parameters, which is used both day and night. Green borders show that the use of default values and all the icons in the example parameters set have green borders. The program used this borders to show that all the parameters under that icon are using the default values that are supplied with the program. If you change the value of any of the parameters then the green border around the icon will disappear. This allows you to see at a glance which aspects of an analysis are using all default values and which are using change values. We'll now move to the materials tab section. The program is supplied with a set of system materials that contain full property data for more than 60 materials. However, the materials tab section does not show icons for all of these materials, but only for those that have been selected in the input data for the various models in the study folder. 
or from materials that you have added yourself while working in the materials tab. There are three materials icons in the fastest example study, all from materials that are selected from models in the analysis. Each icon has a green border showing that the input field and material have the values set for that material in the system materials. You can change the values if you wish. And all the icons in the fastest example study are for pure materials that are supplied in the system materials. But the program also allows you to add your own materials and to define mixtures. Each study folder is created with a default material set, but you can create additional sets if you want to process some runways with different values for materials. The map tab section allows you to set up map images and geographic data so that you can view the regions and features affected by consequence results and risk results. The map image is defined by the power station raster image, and you view this image by selecting map from the view menu. You can close the map window by selecting close all from the window menu. The risk tab section is used to define populated areas, sources of ignition and population categories. Population categories allow you to define different colours and shading for distinguishing between populations on the map. In the fast risk example study, there are separate sets of population and ignition data for day and night. Sets contain many of the same items, but the number of people in each population is different for day and night, and the frequency of traffic on the road is also different. The tab section also contains a risk ranking point folder, but this feature is not relevant to fast risk micro. We will now view the input data. Move to the models tab, and double click on the icon for the model named chlorine rupture. The dialog contains a large number of input fields organised over 17 tab sections, but many of these are relevant only to advanced modelling options, and you will typically only need to supply a small set of input data when defining a model. There is a comprehensive help section which is located at the bottom right of the dialog, and the help window will display a description of the current tab section, but you can use the links inside it and the contents index and search tabs to reach any topic in the help system and gain a full understanding of the way that the input data will be used in the calculations. We will now run the calculations. The program divides calculations into two stages, consequence calculations followed by risk calculations. Consequence calculations determine the effect distance for the various hazardous effects associated with the hazardous event, and the risk calculations determine the risk that these effects will have a fatal impact on people in the surrounding area. To run the consequence calculations, move to the Run Row tab, select Consequence Only from the Calculation Mode toolbar, and then select the Run Rows icon and select Models from the Run menu. Once the calculations are run, to view the consequence results, move to the Models tab, set the current run mode to Night, because the Night Weather folder contains the weather with the most stable conditions, and it's likely to produce the longest effect distances. Select an icon for the model, and then go to the Graph option, and view the graph for all nights, for all weathers. It can be useful to compare the results to several weathers, although there are some features of the graph that are only available if you are viewing the results for a single weather. You can also compare results from different models for a given weather, either by using the view graph option on a folder or a study that contains the model you want to compare, or by moving to the weathers tab section in the study tree and using the view graph option in the weather. Once the calculations have run, to view the consequence results, move to the models tab and select an appropriate model to view the results of. Make sure the current run row is set to night since this has the most stable weather conditions and will give, it, give the longest dispersion distances and then select view the graph for all night weathers. OK the dialog. 
After a pause of a few seconds, the graph window will open in the space to the right of the study tree pane. The graph window usually contains many tab sections, each with a different type of graph. The tab sections included for a particular model will depend on the type of model, on the type of material and on the detail of the dispersion effect behaviour. The chlorine rupture model has graphs for cloud concentration and for toxic effect. The first graph is the central line concentration. This will be showing the results at the time at which the cloud footprint covers the greatest area, which occurs at a different time for each weather. The graph will initially appear to be showing that the concentration is zero, but this is an effect of the scaling. You can change the scaling by selecting Scale and Labels from the Graph menu or the right-click menu. A dialog will open up and if you turn off the automatic scaling and change the maximum concentration from the default value to around 1000 ppm and click on OK, you will get a better view of the concentration results. The first six tab sections all show the results in terms of concentration, but the map and toxic tab sections will allow you to view the results in terms of toxic effect. When you first move to the map tab section, the map graph will be displaying concentration results, but you can select properties from the graph menu or the right click menu to open the graph properties and change the selection of the type of results to display on the map. Select either the outdoor toxic lethality or the indoor toxic lethality results to view the effect distances that will be modelled in the risk calculations. The map graph initially shows the effect zone with a northerly wind, but you can choose wind direction from the graph menu or the right click menu to change the wind direction. In the toxic tab section, the most informative graph is usually the lethality graph as shown, which shows the lethality level along the centre line of the cloud, plotted against downwind distance. For each weather, the graph shows separate effects for a person outdoors and for a person indoors. When calculating the effect indoors, the programme models the build-up concentration inside the building, using representative ventilation data set in the toxic parameter tab section for the model. The program uses these results in performing separate toxic risk calculations for people outdoors and people indoors. We will now view the reports for the chlorine rupture model. Select the icon from the model and then select report from the view menu. After a pause of a few seconds, the report window will open to the right of the study tree pane. The report window will probably hide the graph window, but you can use the option in the Windows menu to move between the windows. For the chlorine rupture model, the first tab section is the input tab section, which lists the input data. The most important report for understanding behaviour events are usually the dispersion reports and commentary reports. The hazard zone report summarises the size of the various fanball effect zones as they will be modelled in the risk calculations. And the outdoor toxic and indoor toxic reports summarise the toxic effect zones. You can have any number of graph windows and report windows open at the same time. After you've finished examining results, you can use close all from the windows menu to close the windows. We will now view the consequence results for flammable models. If you view the results for one of the flammable models, such as the butadiene rupture model, you will not see separate results for outdoors and indoors. The modelling of indoor concentration build-up is performed only for toxic effects, and the radiation calculations do not take into account obstruction or shielding from buildings. When modelling the risk produced by flammable releases, the programme applies the same effect zones to people outdoors and to people indoors. We will now run the risk calculations and the results. To run the calculations, move to the Run Rows tab section 
and select either risk only or consequence and risk from the calculation mode toolbar. The name of the run row will change from blue to black, showing that the run rows do not have risk results. Select the run row icon and then select models from the run menu. The risk calculations will run very quickly in a matter of seconds. If you select consequence and risk as the calculation mode, the program will not repeat the consequence calculations. It already has up to date results for all the models and will proceed immediately to the risk calculations. You can only run risk calculations from the run row tab, not from the models tab. When you run risk calculations, you must process all of the models that are selected for the run row and cannot run the calculations for individual models inside this section. We will now view the risk contour plot for individual risk. Select the run rows icon and then select risk contours from the view menu. The risk contour window will open and when it first opens, the risk contour plot will always be showing the risk to an individual outdoors as shown by the line outdoor contours in the legend for the plot. The level of risk to an individual out of doors in the sewage works is shown as just below 10 to minus 5 per year and the level of risk at the hospital is around 10 to minus 5 per year. To view the risk to an individual indoors, turn on the indoor option in the risk cascade of the map menu. For toxic releases, this risk is calculated using the indoor effect results. And since these have shorter effect distances than for the outdoor effect, the risk contours will move in slightly. For flammable releases, the risk is calculated using the same effect results for indoor and outdoor. If the contents were showing the results only for flammable releases, you would see no difference between the two types of contour. We will now view the results for societal risk. The results for societal risk show the risk distribution for the number of fatalities caused by a hazardous event. They are presented in the form of a graph and a risk ranking report. To view the FN curve, select the run rows icon and then select FN curve from the view menu. The results will be displayed in a graph window. The graph window contains two tab sections. The combined FN graph shows the combined risk for all selected run rows, with factors applied to the risk that describe the proportion of the year for which the conditions represented by the run row are pre present. In the fast risk example study study folder, the factor for the day rows is set to 40%, and this has been used in calculating the frequency for the combined FN graph. The FN curve graph, on the other hand, shows the full unfactor results for each selected run row. The risk is very high, with some outcomes producing more than a thousand fatalities. Most of these fatalities are at the hospital, which has a daytime population of over 3,000 and a night population of about 1,500 which is well within the effect zone of the chlorine release. The factors are set in the run row dialog. We will now view the societal risk ranking report. Select the run rows icon and then select societal risk ranking report from the view menu. The report shows the contribution each model makes to the societal risk. All of the releases make some contribution to the risk, but the risk is dominated by the toxic liquid leak and rupture. You've now seen the main features of Fast Risk Micro. When you are ready to, you should proceed to Chapter 2, which takes you through the stages in setting up your own analysis.